Uh, hopefully this meeting is fresh in your minds since it was only yesterday. Uh, uh, there will need to be some amendments to the recommendations because we took action on it on some of these items, uh, at least the copy that I have in my... Excuse me, council councillors, this is in the late items, the complete oh, 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 you want. Oh, oh, okay. Page late, late three item. is underneath the Regional Transport Committee recommendations. Uh, we got some of them. Okay, I'll, I'll work from this. Okay. So I'll work from the late, late item here. Uh, page, page three, bottom of page three. Um, uh, I would simply note that there is the omission of the uh, fact that the chairman made a eloquent and compelling report at the outset of the meeting uh, regarding the future of the committee and the vision that this committee would bring uh, to the rest of the council, but uh, that's okay. I won't take offense at that. Um, uh, we discussed um, uh, a process that'll take now through through the rest of, through the year, actually next year, of coming up with a uh, refresh of our biosecurity uh, plan. There's some milestones at the middle of the year uh, for that, and then again at the end of the year, we would look to be publicly notifying that. So we did confirm uh, a working party, uh, or at least we confirmed the councillor members of a working party to deal with that, and those are Belford, Graham, and Wilson, as this notes. Um, we discussed a, a submission, a draft submission to the uh, uh, Ministry MPI on uh, on fisheries, uh, and uh, uh, it was noted that uh, that this is a very multiplayer uh, uh, area of activity. We're only one of those players, but uh, as it happens, the community sees us as as potentially playing a leadership role uh, in working our way through those issues, and so it was felt like indeed yes, we should make a submission. We do chair a working group of all these various players uh, around the bay here, so we'll continue to do that. Uh, and uh, the agreement was that uh, uh, that draft that was presented to us uh, yesterday would be uh, looked over and amended, added to, et cetera, by a uh, little working party consisting of myself, Councillors Hewitt and Curtin. Uh, that meeting actually, I believe, has been set for Monday the 19th. Uh, to do that piece of work. Uh, uh, down under reports received uh, on, on the original document, I don't see that on the revised one. Uh, no. Uh, so there, there were a number of reports received. Um, uh, oh, here, here's where the chairman's report is ignominiously uh, included. Uh, <coughs> uh, but of, of a more important note, um, uh, there was a discussion under waterway maintenance approach, which seems innocuous enough, but that led us into a discussion of the council's use of glyphosate, uh, which some feel is a fairly dangerous and, and uh, bothersome uh, a chemical. Uh, used in association with other even more dangerous ones. And so there was an amendment to receive, we, we received the report, but we also asked for a specific uh, a report uh, uh, on the wisdom of our continuing use of that uh, uh, chemical. And so that was uh, handed off to Mike Aidey uh, to deal with, and so we'll be getting a report on that in due course. And uh, I believe that is all that uh, needs to be noted. Okay, now before I uh, just take, uh, ask the officers for their comments, I'd just like to note that I've had a text from Mr. Zuckerberg who says that the Council of Belford's introductory uh, speeches to the committee has not gone viral. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> oh, well, actually, <laughs> actually, <laughs> anyway, officers, you've got Mr. To Chairman, that, the that, Mr. Citizen. Chairman, yeah. it's not you. You needed to go to Google because I forgot to note right. that the Chairman, uh, or, or I'm sorry, not Chairman, uh, Councillor Wilson, uh, recommended at the outset of that meeting that all committee meetings of the council also be uh, recorded and videotaped and put on the, our video archive and. A, uh, a call, a request was made of the uh, chief executive and staff to cost out what that might uh, entail, uh, but um, uh, hopefully with the outcome being that we'll decide to take that action at some point. Supplementary. All right. Anything from the staff? Okay. Any questions? So watch for YouTube. Yeah. Could I just say now, Councillor Belford, you've got a recommendation you wish to move? Uh, move the uh, move the report. And the amendment? As, as, as amended. In as amended by the note. supplementary paper. Yeah, right. Okay, do I have a seconder? I'll second. Councillor Bevan, any discussion, Mr. Belford? Do you would like to add to that? No, nope, that's it. Thank any you. other discussion? All right, put the question. All those in favour will say aye. Aye. Enthusiasm? Contrary, no. Carried. <clears throat> we now move to the Corporate and Strategic Committee. Who's going to give us that report? Vice our Deputy Chair, Chair. <laughs> Councillor Hewitt. No, no, I'm yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're on page 73 of our report and page 4 in our supplementary papers, which includes a 2.3. Um, I'm, I'm happy to take it as read, Chair. Uh, yes, very happy to move recommendations one through to two point, including two point three and three. Okay. All right, Councillor Wilson. Uh, I would just like to add um, a, a robust first meeting, and um, interestingly, we seem to have uh, taken up all of the workshop opportunities in our diary for the first half of the year, leaving none for environment and services, which um, I would have thought would have been a slight concern to to some of the councillors. Anyway, it's a busy schedule that's been established by the um, Corporate and Strategic Committee. We'll be working behind the scenes on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other speakers? Councillor Wilson. Chair, yeah, um, so I had a Hawke's Bay Tourism meeting this morning and uh, with um, benefit of some of the debate yesterday, um, we would hope that there would be invitations to uh, councillors to um, go on what, what they call for mills to look at some of the tourism product and get to know perhaps the staff and, and the directors a bit better um, in, in through next year. So I would hope that there would be a, an invitation sent to the Chief Executive uh, before the end of um, this uh, next week and um, we might be able to try and populate a few opportunities in a diary at some stage uh, going forward, so thank you. Sounds intriguing, like a winery tour, okay. No further discussion, I'll put the question, all those in favour will say aye. Aye. Contrary no to the resolution, carried. Move on to now the Ruatana Water Storage Scheme Item 16. And who's going to lead this out here? All right. Thank James, you, thank would you, you like Chair. to lead us through this, please? Given the number of issues that are contained within this paper, can I suggest that we do this in a, um, in a, in a number of steps? Uh, first of all, um, I would uh, suggest that I, I run through the uh, scope of works uh, for the review and uh, make some comment on those and then take questions from councillors before then moving on to other issues such as the community reference group, the timing, moratorium and uh, financial implications. Uh, so can I just establish whether or not um, that's satisfactory? Sorry, sorry Chair, I was just checking whether you're happy for me to do this in stages and we, rather than run through the entire paper and then take questions, it might be easier for uh, both councillors and the public. I think it's a very good suggestion. And can I just note that uh, Councillor Wilson is going to be leaving the meeting certainly shortly for a family matter. Right. Stage, the first stage you wish to deal with? 
is is the work program itself, Chair. Work program? So, right, where you go, James. Um, the uh, work program as presented in today's paper uh, largely um, uh, resembles that which was provided to the previous council meeting. Um, in the ensuing period we have reviewed a number of public submissions uh, on the scope of works and I have received feedback from some councillors. Uh, I've taken all that into account and made uh, a few changes and I'll just run through those now. Uh, the first uh, change relates to the financial review uh, work packages number four and five, and I have uh, proposed replacing Deloitte, uh, the previous advisor to the council, uh, with Mr John Palleray. Uh, Mr Palleray is a um, local accountant financial advisor. He's currently the chair of the uh, airport, uh, the Hawke's Bay Airport, and also chair of the Napier City Council Audit and Risk Committee. Uh, and a former partner of Pallaray Pearson, uh, also a former uh, uh, director of Unison Networks. So well known in the region and well known for his expertise in financial matters. So Mr Pallaray is proposed for replacing uh, Deloitte and that's in response to some concerns around uh, the adequacy of uh, Deloitte's work previously. A question, Mr Chairman. Um, Councillor Dick. I'm presuming that uh, Mr. Pallaray will review Deloitte's work rather than starting from clean sheet. Yes, uh, that's quite correct, Councillor. The intention is to minimise the extent of rework, uh, which is a principle that was agreed uh, by uh, the Council at its previous meeting, which is essentially to maximise the use of existing work. So he will review uh, the advice provided to Council to date by Deloitte and give you a view as to its adequacy uh, or the need for any further analysis. I've, I've had no problem ever with Deloitte's work, but also I respect uh, Mr Pallaray and if his brief is to review it rather than rework it, then uh, I'm happy with that. Okay, I've just asked a uh, procedural question, James. Do we need to resolve to appoint Mr Pallaray as this committee, or is it sufficient to be within the executives of what, yes, certainly what I'm proposing is that the uh, work package as presented uh, is uh, accepted and adopted by, uh, uh, by Council, including uh, the resources allocated for it, uh, and uh, both internal and external, and the providers, so do it all as one package, okay. subject to any amendments that want okay. to be uh, made at the end of that. That's fair enough. So the second change uh, relates to um, uh, peer review of the, um, the, the contracted uh, uh, uptake uh, and uh, demand. I've added into the uh, work pro sorry uh, work package number six. I've added into that taking into account any new information available from existing water user agreements. Had a helpful suggestion from. Uh, uh, Councillor Belford that there is uh, obviously some more information now available from 196 water user agreements about uh, water uptake and that we should at least use that as part of the analysis. Uh, and it's been suggested here that we use uh, Lewis Tucker Limited. Lewis Tucker is a uh, boutique advisory firm based uh, in Wellington that has undertaken due diligence on behalf of the institutional investor uh, in the scheme and so have a high degree of familiarity uh, with the water uptake uh, assumptions. Uh, Mr Chris Morrison of Lewis Tucker is, um, is available to undertake this work again to minimise the amount of rework, leverage the extent of analysis already undertaken. Uh, I would note that Mr Morrison um, is a, a, a ratepayer of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council and does own a, uh, a, an orchard uh, uh, in, uh, in the Hastings district, uh, and so um, he, uh, he does have a, a regional connection and interest in, uh, in the long term of, um, of the scheme. Just responding to some concerns about um, consultants from outside the region being involved. The uh, next uh, changes uh, relate to... Mr Chair? Question? Yes. Uh, it looks like you're, you're uh, proceeding down. Are you, uh, a comment on number nine? So, so Councillor, if I could just go to number eight, first of all, again, uh, added in the change there to take account of the, um, the existing water user agreements as part of the analysis. Uh, and uh, we have proposed again that uh, Mr Morrison from Lewis Tucker uh, and a local uh, advisor, Mr Cannon, uh, be used to undertake this, uh, this piece of work um, uh, that was previously done by uh, McFarlane Agribusiness and um, 
had had been the cause of some concern for some uh, councillors and some members of the public. Uh, number nine, uh, we have essentially uh, suggested that um, we don't redo this piece of work. Uh, the, um, the broader economic um, uh, implications uh, of the scheme um, are based on a range of scenarios. Um, the suggestion is that we uh, simply see if there are any changes arising from the analysis uh, undertaken by Lewis Tucker of the McFarlane report. Uh, and see whether there are any parameters of the broader economic uh, impacts that need um, any further work. But our expectation is that, that those numbers which were provided with a range of scenarios and a, a range of different uh, economic outcomes is simply uh, repackaged and, and, and restated, if you like. So I would raise a question about that. I mean, the Butcher Report uh, was one that we agonized over. He came and presented it uh, directly to us, and it was challenged pretty significantly. Uh, but his, but the bottom line was, uh, his, his position was, look, uh, you give me a set of land uses, and I'll put them into the top of the model, and we'll see what comes out the bottom. So I'm assuming, while there's no reference to him at all, that that's what you actually are contemplating, that if, if the number eight review uh, comes up with a, let's say, a straw man likely scenario, that that's what would be recranked through Butcher's model uh, to, because, because obviously a hell of a lot of claims have been made about what the economic benefits would be and the overall uh, economic uh, value of the scheme w was very much driven by what do we think is going to happen on the land. So. Uh, that was all seriously questioned. That's right. So rather than do this bottom-up exercise all over again, we'll simply wait till uh, uh, Lewis Tucker have undertaken their peer review of the McFarlane report, uh, and then at that point make a further decision about whether there's any further work required. Okay. Right. Moving down to uh, uh, work stream number 11. Uh, now this is the Nimmo Bell report into alternative investments. Um, I'm recommending that we not proceed with, um, uh, with this piece of work. What had been suggested essentially is that we uh, just summarise and restate uh, that, that piece of work. Um, I've received feedback from um, a number of councillors that they see that of limited value uh, and essentially that this is a review of the RWSS as opposed to a, a broader review of the strategic um, uh, use of the council's balance sheet uh, which will get bundled up obviously in the uh, review of the organisational strategic plan that will happen next year. So uh, in the interests of trying to limit the scope of the review and minimise the, the, uh, the volume of work, this is one piece of kind of low hanging fruit if you like which uh, I'm recommending uh, be knocked off the list. Uh, moving over to item number 12, um, this is the assessment of um, essentially uh, the implications uh, for uh, implementing Plan Change 6. Uh, we had previously uh, had uh, Mr Ian Milner of Rural Directions down as the external provider on this. Uh, I received some concern about that based on Mr Milner's uh, work to date for HBRIC uh, and we have suggested instead now that the external providers uh, be uh, uh, a combination of Mr Lockie Grant uh, who runs a, a consultancy out of Wanganui uh, called Land Vision. Um, Mr Grant has extensive experience in advising uh, farmers on uh, environmental management including um, sediment erosion control, riparian uh, management and uh, meeting regulatory requirements uh, and so he comes with uh, particular expertise on that land question. Uh, Mr Ned Norton um, is actually formerly of NIWA, uh, he's now in private consultancy but he has been um, internationally recognised for his analysis as a freshwater scientist of the environmental implications of irrigation schemes uh, and so between the two of them they provide um, the skill sets we believe that we need to understand the environmental implications of meeting Plan Change 6 and what those implications would be on farm. Uh, he would work very closely with um, staff in the land management uh, consenting and, uh, and science teams. This work stream is essentially HBRC staff led. Uh, it is noted that the Regional Council will 
obviously be responsible for implementing Plan Change 6 regardless of the outcome uh, of the review with respect to the scheme uh, and that responsibility for ensuring uh, that Plan Change 6 is implemented will rest with Council. Uh, so that is why this is Council staff led primarily. Uh, moving to number 14, uh, we're proposing that uh, Aqualink uh, be um, commissioned to uh, assist us in understanding the irrigation security and resultant farm gate production impacts in the event uh, that the RWSS uh, not proceed and that the um, supplementary flows from the scheme are not provided. Uh, Aqualink, while they are based in Canterbury and the Waikato, um, are nationally recognised for their expertise in this area um, and we believe that going outside the region to understand these implications um, is desirable based on the paucity of local expertise in understanding um, irrigation uh, security uh, matters. Uh, we have a new item with number 15 uh, which has been suggested uh, by um, some members uh, of the public in their submissions and some councillors. Uh, so this is to um, uh, commission Mr Barry Riddler, uh, who has been a, um, a vocal critic of the scheme, uh, to provide a report to Council on potential alternative approaches to dry land farming, essentially farming without irrigation in the Tuki Tuki catchment. Yes, what's the Council's view? Uh, I have concerns about the independence when you are utilising proposed um, antagonists. Would you not get somebody independent? Um, Councillor, one of the, the, the great challenges we're finding, and I'm certainly finding this with respect to assembling the community reference group, um, is that we are starting to run out of people, certainly within the region, but even nationally, um, who haven't either been involved in the scheme in some respects or, or profit a view to date. Um, my view was that, that Mr Riddler has um, made strident commentary with respect to um, the, the scheme and therefore there is benefit in giving him the opportunity to put his best case forward, if you like, to the council around alternatives uh, to the scheme um, and that can be considered alongside all the other advice that comes through in the work package. Uh, just make a comment on that as well, Chair. Um, I, I think that, that that part of the work is really tangential to the review as I see it and um, the fact is whether the scheme goes ahead or not, the vast majority of the land that we're talking about will not be irrigated and I think there's probably some benefit to doing that regardless. Okay. Item number 16, so we're proposing uh, that uh, NIWA um, assist us with uh, reviewing the e efficacy of the flushing f flows. Um, look, I would note that this was canvassed at length by uh, the Board of Inquiry. Um, there was considerable um, scrutiny around the, um, the, uh, the value, if you like, the environmental value of flushing flows. However, despite that, um, there remains persistent concern um, and commentary uh, by um, a number of members of the public about whether or not the flushing flows will have um, the desired effect and therefore based on that persistent level of, um, of concern that we uh, bring NIWA who haven't previously um, advised on these, these matters and who um, do hold the requisite expertise nationally to provide yet again another um, independent peer review assessment of the efficacy of those flows. I'm sorry Chair, there are, there are a few more. Um, look in relation to items 17 and 18. We've added in the legal advice uh, that has been procured variously by Fish and Game, Forest and Bird and the Environmental Defence Society. They have made their own collective submission to uh, the review uh, and have uh, sought uh, between them uh, legal advice and uh, well, we, uh, staff believe that there is merit in considering the advice that they have procured, the advice of HBRIC and the advice that HBRC has received <coughs> on these legal matters and that we provide a full summary of the nature of the different views uh, back to the Council. <coughs> Correct, so Simpson Grierson uh, have pre pre well, Simpson Grierson have previously provided advice to the Council. Um, what we're proposing is that we sit, sit that advice alongside the advice that HBRIC has received 
and that the environment of NGO community have received and that we bring all of that uh, forward as a package. Item number 21, uh, we are suggesting that we not proceed with this package. Now this was looking at uh, how to reduce consenting costs for on-farm storage in, in the catchment. Um, uh, look, the view is that that will have a very small effect on the overall assessment of whether or not to proceed, proceed with the scheme and is again low-hanging fruit to, to drop off. Um, item number 22, uh, a number of submissions have raised concerns about the seismic risk relating to the dam um, and some of those have referenced the uh, very recent uh, events uh, in, the, um, uh, in the South Island. Uh, and have asked whether that represents new information. Uh, indeed, there has been new information come from GNS around um, uh, the you know, seismic activity, uh, which may or may not have a bearing on the scheme. Uh, HBRIC have advised me that they intend uh, asking the dam design panel to specifically look at that new information and see whether that has any bearing on the design of the scheme. Uh, that design panel uh, is not due to be uh, assembled and reviewed uh, until uh, the scheme moves to detailed design. Uh, so um, simply what we're saying is that at this point in time um, the, uh, there won't be um, uh, sufficient detailed design for anyone to review with respect to the seismic risk and that is something that gets picked up at the next stage. Uh, yes. yeah, sorry. So what you're suggesting there is a detailed design hasn't been completed yet? That's correct. That's okay. my understanding from HBRIC. That is very much moving to the next phase. Um, there has been design work undertaken sufficient to uh, get a, um, a, a reasonable estimate of uh, uh, build cost, uh, which obviously has underpinned the business case. Um, but there are very, very, very specific uh, design uh, details which will um, only be uh, commissioned at the point of financial close. Uh, item number 23, recommending not, uh, not going into reliability uh, of the distribution network uh, for the purposes of, of, of the review, um, uh, just on the basis again of trying to uh, uh, minimise the amount of work to do in this, uh, uh, this process. Um, <coughs> it's at the margins of materiality, uh, is, is the argument we're making. Um, item number 24, um, councillors will be aware that uh, uh, there has been some degree of concern about the synthetic flow modelling uh, and inflows into the reservoir. Uh, in particular, Mr Colin Ryden has submitted to the council uh, repeatedly on this and has expressed some, uh, some concern. What's suggested here is that we commission Mr Ryden to uh, peer review uh, the work undertaken uh, by others and that we present uh, his findings along with those of appropriate um, uh, uh, expertise. Um, Tonkin and Taylor have been the advisors to H to date, uh, and then councillors can uh, form their own views based on, um, on that peer review and on, on the advice from others. Uh, probably the final thing, uh, just in terms of the work package to note, uh, I have um, uh, revised up with uh, the budget for um, supporting the community reference group from 5,000 to 10,000, up to 10,000. I'm not entirely sure at this point in time uh, whether there will need to be uh, any remuneration for those uh, persons that we're currently looking at uh, for their work. Uh, and so I've just left a little bit of lee leeway in there. And I've also added in $10,000 for project management assistance. That's essentially just acknowledging the fact that my expectation is that councillors expect me to still do uh, all the other work that uh, I have on my work programme as well as this review. Um, there hasn't been any suggestion at this point in time that there be anything be taken off my work programme. Uh, and on that basis I could do with um, uh, contracting in a modest amount of project management support uh, just to keep the wheels uh, in motion. So that's resulted in a, a, a minor increase in the overall uh, budget uh, and uh, for, for, the, um, uh, for the work we were looking at about 130,000 uh, uh, in uh, up to 130,000 in external costs to undertake this work uh, at the previous council meeting and I've revised that um, up to uh, 170,000 uh, which I'm seeking uh, your approval for uh, today. So. Chair, that's, the, uh, that's, that's a, a summary of the changes to the work package uh, as presented previously and I'm happy to take any further questions on those matters uh, at this point. Okay, so your next subject will be? The Community Reference Group. Okay, so let's, so let's group 
Yes, I'm just a bit puzzled about um, public consultation. Um, if the if the review results in the project being halted, I'd, there will need to be some public cons consultation because the long-term plan will have to be altered. But that almost would, would have to would be a formality. I would I would expect if if it, it endorses the project and it proceeds, uh, and presuming that the legal challenge is successful, I would have thought we would simply be slipping back into the mode of um, a ticking off the, um, what do we call them, the conditions precedent and getting on with the job. Because the, this, thing, this thing's been consulted to death. Councillor, um, almost literally. look, that may well be the case and, and, and for the purposes of the review I'm not making any assumptions about the next steps, uh, the resources involved, um, and what those steps may be. Uh, essentially what I'm saying is that, that, that we've, we're setting aside a, a modest budget to um, consult on the outcomes of the review, uh, expecting that there will be a high degree of public interest in that but any further steps subsequent to that will, will need to um, be supported by advice from staff on costs and implications and process, and we will provide that uh, at that time uh, once the Council's next steps are, are clear. I'm sure, I'm sure that, um, well, I, well uh, to, to, to be fair, um, we are expecting that the exercise will uh, be heavily based on um, a document which is readily um, accessible and understandable, that summarises the key elements and the issues with the scheme, uh, and that um, we will be uh, seeking to raise a level of public understanding around those issues, um, not inviting uh, necessarily further, um, uh, further submissions on those matters. Um, essentially, the review is seeking to put to bed uh, most of those issues, and where there are um, areas of disagreement between uh, various parties, those matters will simply be on the table for uh, councillors to reflect on in making their, uh, th their decisions on where to go to next. Uh, okay, uh, Councillor Hewitt. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks, James. I obviously have some concerns. I note that some councillors have taken out some, um, some of the, um, the external providers due to I don't know, whatever fundamental differences, so I, I'm concerned that you're using some external providers um, that have publicly submitted against the dam, and anyway, you've got your reasoning. Uh, I think it's important in here that the most fundamental questions are answered, and, and to me, namely, that would be um, the implications of Plan Change 6 without the dam, because these were um, these two projects were put together in tandem, they were designed to go in tandem, <coughs> and the... And the um, the implications for Plan Change 6 without the dam are horrendous for Central Hawke's Bay. Uh, so um, also exit costs, I think they have to be at the forefront. But um, out of this, we, we, it's a very expensive cup of tea and we, um, I want to be satisfied that the councillors around the table, uh, they have got the information that they require in these questions and reports to be making a decision at the end. Now, you know, we don't want to get through this expensive cup of tea and then have a whole lot more questions and more delay tactics. You know, let's commit to, to something here where, you know, we're, we're looking for assurances. If there are any gaps, then they are um, they're brought to light and and um, any further information that is needed is sought pretty smartly, but, yeah. I'm looking for assurances from the councillors and from you that we're going to get somewhere at the end of this. Well, certainly I'll be doing my level best to ensure that there's sort of no stone left unturned in mm. terms of um, issues of concern being given a good thrashing and a good airing. Uh, what I can't um, provide you with any assurance on is that necessarily that will be to the satisfaction of all persons in the region uh, or, and all, all councillors, but uh, look, I, I'll, I'll give it my best shot uh, and, um, and, and we'll see where we get to. Okay, well Kay. then the request to councillors, in, in good faith, is there anything missing here? Can you ask through the Chair? Well, uh, I think that's implicit here. I don't, I don't want to go around everybody here, but it's quite clear this is a review to make sure everybody understands yeah. what's going on. And this is for the Council to be well informed when it comes to making a decision. 
That's very clear. That's what the outset was. Do I need to ask the question again? Belford. I'm happy to answer the question, though. Um, uh, I, I think this is a, a excellent, comprehensive review. Uh, I think the players involved have been thought through carefully. I do think it is important in a process like this to to uh, involve uh, some of the folks, particularly those who, who have some professional grounding behind uh, what, what they have had to say about this all along in the, in the process. One would think that, that you would want to identify some of the strongest uh, skeptics and neutralize them uh, in a process like this uh, by exposing them in the give and take of, of this process. So I, for my part, I'm, I'm very happy. I think all the questions that I would have uh, about this are, are well covered here, and I think the the people who have been identified to do the various bits and pieces, uh, uh, that's all well and good. And uh, I guess the only question I have is, w uh, how, what's the grand reveal going <laughs> to are, are you going to, are you anticipating dosing this out in some manner or holding it all and there's one big opening of the raincoat uh, in April? Is that? <laughs> Uh, look, the time frame doesn't really allow us to um, uh, to, to drip feed this. Um, the intention and, and many of the different parts all obviously have implications on on, on each other. Um, so the idea is to create a, a single picture, uh, and councillors have previously expressed a desire to um, see a document which is easily accessible, not um, overly dense or overly technically um, uh, challenging. And so that is our challenge, if you like, as a communications exercise to, to, to summarise the, the, the key issues and elements as, as succinctly as we possibly can. So the idea will be that that will come together in a report, uh, and that report will come to the Council uh, uh, based on the, the, the agreed due date. One supplementary sweet. statement by Councillor Hewitt? No, one more question. Uh, so, oh, the last one was quick. Okay, supplementary question. Um, given that the... Um, the the Court of Appeal has granted leave to appeal. The Supreme Court has granted leave to appeal, and that's set for February. So the earliest we may be hearing back, I mean, sorry, in March, and we had a request from the Ashbrook Board yesterday to be shortening this. Can this time frame be shortened, brought into March, James? Um, I'm reasonably um, hesitant to, to give an assurance that it could be. Uh, there is, you know, and the main main issue we've got is that we've got um, we've got the Christmas period, uh, and we've got a large number of different people involved in this work, uh, and so um, I, April remains my um, my preferred report back. But can I say that, um, based on previous um, experiences with the Supreme Court, uh, and you can think about, for example, the um, King Salmon decision. The time from uh, which hearings uh, adjourned to the time at which a judgment was issued uh, was many, many months. And I think um, while we have a hearing date uh, early in the new year, uh, I would be very surprised if, uh, if there is a judgment delivered uh, within a month or two of that date. So I, I, I remain um, of the view that it's almost certain that we won't get a Supreme Court outcome until after the end of April. Question? Yes, yeah, so that, that absolutely concurs with my view of the court process, and I would like to, through you, Chair, ask Councillor Hewitt where she got the notion that the Supreme Court meets in February and gives a decision in March. That's just unbelievable. I don't where did, where did I that time frame come from? I think it's an unnecessary question. The <coughs> people report view. you. What are the questions? Yeah, but it does put unnecessary but we've already, but to be fair, James has said he's mindful of that and he's looking to a report in April and he's of the view that it will be uh, within the envelope of time for the Supreme Court decision. So that's his view. Let's leave that sit. We don't need it more. Now, Councillor <coughs> Hewitt uh, asked the question, that is there anything <coughs> in this work program that people haven't got on here, they want on here, and it may be an issue for them? And I just want to say to people to ask that. I think that it's a, a question that used to be asked, you know, speak up now or forever hold thy peace. 
So if people haven't put it on the deck by now and it comes up later, then your ability to argue the case is incredibly weakened. Okay? Right. Now let's move on, James. I'm conscious of the time. It's now 22. I was hoping to get thank, this. Thank you, Chair. We'll get through these last items hopefully quickly. The community reference group uh, mentioned at the last uh, uh, meeting, so I'm continuing to have discussions with various persons about their willingness to serve in this regard. Um, two points I really want to make. One is the purpose of the group um, I've suggested in paragraph 9 of the, uh, the Council paper uh, that this group is not asked to make any recommendations in relation to the review or reach consensus on this matter. In my view, um, we're asking too much of, of a group uh, of that nature. Um, you know, they would need to review absolutely everything um, and familiarise themselves with everything and we'd need to have the appropriate expertise and probably the wisdom of Solomon uh, in chairing the group to somehow arrive at a consensus or a recommended position. So it's, it's proposed here that their job is to, in, to provide me with advice that the process we're undertaking is appropriate uh, and that we're adequately answering the questions that, that councillors have asked by way of the work scope. Now that's not to say they need to agree with the, the, the advice, it's just that the, the, uh, the questions have been uh, well and truly answered. Um, the, the second really uh, point about this is that uh, we will aim to have people from um, the Hawke's Bay region wherever possible and absolutely will involve uh, members of the six Central Hawke's Bay community. I've had some names already suggested to me uh, by the, the Mayor of uh, Central Hawke's Bay and will ensure that that community is adequately represented. But this is, this is essentially an advisory group, uh, this is not a decision making group. And uh, as I haven't been able to settle the composition of that as of today, uh, my request of you is that you delegate to me the decision uh, to appoint that group uh, and then I report back to, to Council in the new year uh, on the composition or I'd certainly be happy to do so via email or something in the intervening period once we've settled the names. Councillor Belford. So the, the process with this group, uh, unlike the Council, we get the big reveal. It sounds like you have in mind dosing out things bodies of work, chunks of work as they get done, asking for their sort of blessing of its completeness, uh, as you say, not its, not its, you know, which yeah. way. Uh, so that group would be presumably meeting and well, periodically to kind of catch up to where things are, what, what's been done, are they happy with it, et cetera. That's precisely right. So I, I envisage, you know, three three principal stages. First of all, uh, meeting to, to to look at how we're approaching answering the questions in the in the work work scope, uh, and get get their advice on that. Then once the work the preliminary work comes in in the first tranche, um, ask their, their view of the adequacy of that. And then finally, once it all comes together, um, have we done the job adequately? And I'm proposing here that they will make a statement either as a group or as individuals, whichever is their preference, back to council as to how they feel that like the work has been undertaken. And this is essentially to safeguard the independence. Uh, if if, if they are of the view that somehow uh, there's been um, inadequate work undertaken or, or the advice has been um, in any way um, compromised, that they are then in a position to give, give you advice about that. Councillor Dick. Yeah, Mr Chairman, I think it's absolutely vital to the objectivity and the credibility of this report that James is delegated with the responsibility of selecting and appointing these people and we should have no part of in it at all. I'd endorse Councillor Dick's view actually and I'd also make the observation that um, you are largely going to use people in this community. Anybody that's followed this process to date will have a view on my guess is it would be impossible to find somebody who does not have a view already and the key thing for you is to make sure that you get a balance of views fed back to you, pro and con and that's my expectation and, and I imagine it's yours as well. Thank you. Your Chair. next um, item. So the next item was timing and I'll just skip over that on the basis that I think we've already covered that question. Uh, the proposal is to report at the council meeting on the 22nd, sorry the 26th of April next year. Yes, we've covered that. Uh, and so um, the, the final two remaining items relate to the um, financial implications, and I have already uh, mentioned those. 
Um, so what I am seeking is uh, your approval to um, incur expenditure up to $170,000 on external costs. Um, it's my hope to uh, spend as little of that as possible, um, but um, that is an upper limit and that that would be capitalised into the overall cost uh, of the scheme to date for the Council. Uh, and then the question, uh, probably the final substantive question, relates to the uh, proposed moratorium on further work uh, on the scheme by HBRIC. Uh, and so, look, I, I, I appended to the paper was the letter from the Chairman uh, to the Chair of HBRIC uh, of last week. Um, that, uh, that has been responded to uh, as of yesterday by way of a draft letter which was provided to uh, uh, councillors that were in attendance uh, in a workshop uh, with uh, members of the Board of HBRIC yesterday. Uh, and in essence, they have confirmed uh, that they are comfortable uh, with the uh, resolutions set out in uh, 4.11, 4.12 and 4.13 of your paper. Uh, and the only amendment to that is uh, they have suggested uh, that in relation to not entering into any um, further expenditure obligations, there are some statutory uh, obligations that they have, such as replying to Lagoima requests or complying with audit processes, uh, and that they uh, be uh, uh, enabled to maintain the value of the company's existing assets, uh, which means um, essentially maintaining um, their current intellectual property and or contractual obligations, but they certainly don't take on any new contracts or new obligations other than um, the, uh, rolling over the current water sales contracts and maintaining the value of those. So that was set out in their letter. Um, Chair, I suggest that we... Uh, and finance is still assist with review. <coughs> and finance is review, absolutely. So, um, Chair, I suggest that in re relation to the recommendations uh, in, under 4.1 that we just make a couple of amendments to that based on their draft uh, letter of response, if that is... Um, Satisfactory to councillors. Okay, <clears throat> right. I think we've got a good uh, this, had a good discussion. I'm my eyes on the clock, and uh, well, can we complete this before lunch? Yeah. Seems we've had a pretty good go at it. Do people agree, Councillor Belfer. Can can uh, it, uh, we have the outgoing letter from us to H Brick? Is there any reason why we can't incorporate the inbound letter as a attachment to the report? That doesn't appear to be anything. Of, of any controversiality or? I think that's just a matter of timing. It's, it came in last night, so we had to get into the papers and do in your little box. So no, I understand, but can we now? Yeah, well, we can do that. So okay. let's change the, let's change the, let's put that in the resolution. So the, okay. someone prepared to move the resolution uh, amended in 4.1 to include the items which uh, the HBRIC board want us to uh, presume about legal expenses, uh, contractual expenses, and expenses to participate in this process? Yes, um, the, the specific wording I've just provided um, to Mrs Hooper, so uh, they, they are there and she, she can type them in. Um, one possibility, Chair, is that, that we break for lunch and she can type those in and we can just resolve that after, after lunch, if you're... No, we're just doing it now. And so, the, uh, so we're doing it now. Now, would someone like to... I'll move that from the Chair as the, mem as the resolution. And I'll have a second with Councillor uh, Balford. Uh, I'll reserve my right to speak. We just wait for the member to go up. <laughs> Councillor Bailey. I, I, will, I will make a comment, Chair, um, because I didn't get an opportunity to, well, I, I forsake the opportunity to say yes, I'm, I'm happy. I'm really happy with the work programme that's, that's set out. Um, I'm really pleased to see that uh, that we're, go we're going to try to answer the question about what happens if, if the uh, scheme doesn't go ahead in terms of the farmers in Central Hawke's Bay around plan change sucks. That was certainly a, a question that, uh, you know, I agree with Councillor Hewitt on that one. That's a really important question to have answered for those people and um, I'm pleased to see that's a big focus of the, of the work programme. Mr Michael Morgan. Yes, yeah, just along the same lines, and uh, probably a silly question, but if the dam did go ahead, is it possible to move plan change six start back two years? No. Answer that's no. Thank you. Comes with it. It's right. It's going to come like Christmas. Can't <laughs> shift it back or forward. Councillor Bevan. Yes, I'll I'll also say a few words in support of the motion. Um, this has been a 
really good, robust process, and I'd like to thank um, James Palmer for his part in it. He's he's had to take a fair bit of pulling and pushing from all sections of the community, not just people sitting around this table, and I think you've um, done a pretty good job of putting together a, a comprehensive document here, which I think covers all the bases, certainly all the bases that I can think of. Um, yes, there are issues around the external advice you're going to get. As I said before, I think the key is balance. You're not going to find anybody that doesn't already have a view of some sort. Uh, so I look forward to the outcomes in April. <coughs> You haven't posted up yet. Yeah. Ready to rock and roll. Okay, who else wants to speak? Any other speakers? Just waiting for the words. Well, I, I, I just think we should be recognising that um, James and the other people involved are undertaking a massive piece of work. Um, and, and I'm confident that they will get it right, um, but the, he and others will have to use every bit of steel that's in their back, backbone at present and maybe give it a bit of reinforcement um, to get through this process um, in a, both a timely and um, effective way. It's not going to please everyone. Well, the only thing I'd say, oh, Councillor Hewer. Thank you, and I look forward to the, this matter being resolved. Thanks, James. Best of luck with the review. Right, here we've got up, coming up, waiting for it. Da -da -da. Drum roll, please. Oh, oh, yeah. So this is what was there, basically yeah. all of this here, and then this has been added. Yeah. So except for expenditure that was required, to comply da, da, yeah. da, for the directors to comply with the duties. And you've got to correct the spelling mistake, yeah, companies. I will. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right, is everybody clear on that? Council's happy to vote? Okay, I'll put the resolution. All those in favour will say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Carried. I declare a luncheon break. We'll adjourn for 30 minutes. Just, uh, Mr. Chairman, all those you mentioned rock and roll. Um, Bunny Walters died this morning. He did. Oh, no. Yes, it's a fabulous voice which will sing no more. Bunny Walters. Well, we've still got Mike Mulhey. You, you're as good. You're the person.